The markets have opened up in the green and it's good to see that they're holding in the green as well. The mid-cap index as well are moving in steps. So pretty good going for starters. It's a dull day though, Mangalam. We've got a long weekend that's awaiting us and plenty of bank holidays as well. So, um, you know, waiting to get through this day, I think most of the traders. <laughs> Absolutely. They're just waiting to get through this day. But yeah, surprisingly, the volumes for the first hour have been higher uh, yeah, in, in the cash market. 7,500 7, on the NSC, close to around 700 crores on the BSE as well in terms of cash volumes. But the mid-cap index, after outperforming yesterday, currently has dipped into the red. Public sector banks not doing too well. We have Oriental Bank of Commerce at the low point of the day. Indian Bank too trading at the low point of the day, along with Allahabad Bank and Bank of Baroda. So this is something that we will keep an eye out on. But again, it is a ho-hum sort of day ahead of the long weekend. Remember, US markets too shut in today's trading session. First up, all the top stories that we're tracking this morning. Tech Mahindra gets a boost after positive commentary coming in from the analyst meet yesterday. The management expects significant revenue boost from 5G to come beyond FY20. Morgan Stanley remains overweight on the stock. And telecom stocks are under pressure today. Kotak Institutional Equity says that almost 30% of the combined quarter to EBITDA of Airtel and Vodafone India can be attributed to net interconnected EBITDA and that will go down to zero from January 2020. Indian Hotels gains after Motilal Oswal initiates coverage on the stock with a buy. The brokerage firm expects the company to record revenue growth of 9%, EBITDA growth of 25% over the next three years. Other hotel stocks also take heart, so the likes of Taj GVK, Kamath Hotels, Royal Orchid and others rally and trade. Well, by the look of it, uh, it appears that everything's going pretty well. But you look at some of those broader mm. market stocks, there is some selling that uh, we are seeing. OBC has moved a tad bit low in the last few minutes. I think Sun TV had started off in the green. That as well as seeing some selling pressure. So keep an eye out on a couple of uh, those stocks. Well, on the flip side, something like an IRB that was trading in the red just around a few minutes ago. That's up close to a percent and a half and BEML as well. That stock is well holding with some gains as we speak. But how do you trade the Nifty from here? The Nifty is holding with a gain of around 38 points odd. Uh, Ashri Gujal joins in to tell us his trade on the Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank that is a relative underperformer today. Ashwini. See, there is uh, good news on the Nifty A. Uh, you know, FMCG is uh, backing up and uh, also uh, IT is doing well. The banks are kind of, uh, you know, having a slow day but it's not like they are weak so my sense would be that maybe in the afternoon you could actually uh, you know all things being equal have a better day than we had yesterday because if IT is good banks come back plus you have FMCG which works out that will help the nifty get past uh, 10 650 and uh, after that you have a uh, you know 80 to 100 point style run so this is a good time to accumulate, you know, Bank Nifty, yes, PSU banks are lower, etc. But these are, you know, mild corrections. The banking is the space which has the most amount of positives. Also on mid caps, uh, you know, choppy action. But again, mid caps are also looking strong because they tend to respond to, you know, cost of capital much better than larger stocks. So overall, uh, you know, I would like to buy here. Uh, keep a 10,600 type of stop on Nifty. Uh, Bank Nifty may be 100 points lower, but uh, I would expect the markets to end higher than where we are right now. Uh, individual stocks, uh, Chola Mandalam is a buy with a stop of 1290, target of 1345. Uh, Dabar is a buy with a stop of 400, target of 421. And HDFC Bank is a buy with a stop of 2020, target of 2055. Ashwini, do you have a range on the Nifty Bank for today given its weekly options expiry and we're absolutely in the middle of where the maximum open interest is placed, 26,000 on the lower end, 26,500 on the upper end? Well, you know, given the kind of firing uh, these uh, call writers got yesterday, uh, I think they will not push their luck and overall it's a very strong index. So, uh, you'll always have uh, you know, two or three large banks uh, backing the bank Nifty. So, uh, you know, yesterday's high was 26,400. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we are able to cross beyond 26,400 for the day because just when uh, people uh, tend to get short on a strong index, the bears often tend to get trapped. 
and the nifty strengthening is a uh, you know much better omen because uh, if it and uh, banks start to perform then it will be very difficult to for people to keep the nifty lower uh, remember that for last two days nifty uh, has had a very bad time and that is where uh, you know bigger pullback should be expected today which needs to be held by the banks ashwini uh, disclosures we have uh, bank nifty uh, long positions Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much, Ashwini, for joining and giving us those details. Well, but let's move on. In telecom stocks, they're under some pressure today. Nimesh told us, watch it in the morning. And in fact, they're some of the biggest losers today. Nimesh, tell us why. Uh, yes, Nigel. So, you know, uh, there are a few reasons why the telecom stocks are under pressure. First and foremost, uh, Vodafone Idea had an analyst meet yesterday while they, while they maintained, uh, while they spoke about the CapEx plans and, and fundraising as well. Uh, you know, the other interesting part is the fact that they, uh, they've said they, they want to achieve the merger synergies by 2021 versus 20, uh, 2023 earlier. What this means is this could have an impact on Bhati Infotel. The first on Bhati Infotel stock, uh, uh, you know, Kotek has written a note today morning saying the network rash rationalization is not over. Could see another 22,000, uh, you know, tower exits uh, uh, because of the because of this whole uh, merger and rationalization. What this means is this could hit the uh, hit hit the uh, you know impact the EBITDA by close to eight to ten percent and and for the fair value as well. So I think that's eighty one percent is wrong. I think it's eight to ten percent is the EBITDA impact. And, and on the fair value. So, that's that's a small correction on, on that. Um, coming to uh, both I, uh, Idea Vodafone and Bharti Airtel, uh, Kotak today has written a note that interconnectivity connectivity charges which all these telecom players earn uh, for, for Rel Geo, the net uh, you know interconnectivity cost and the gross uh, collection from uh, both Idea and Vodafone are quite diverse. Uh, in fact, uh, for for Q2 itself, both Idea and and, uh, and uh, Bharti earned close to 30% of the revenues came from the interconnectivity charges and that will go to zero by, by FI 2020. So, you know, th that could have an impact on the EBITDA as well. Uh, Kotak, in fact, has went on to say that for Bharti, uh, Bharti Airtel, the EBITDA impact could be 10 to 12% and for Vodafone, it could be as high as 75% impact on EBITDA. So, that is the reason why both uh, Idea Vodafone, uh, Bharti Airtel and Bharti Infotel, all the three stocks are under pressure today.